Welcome back to another Village Wealth Management podcast. We are starting a new season, and uh, we've been off the uh, the game a little bit on recording the podcast. So this is our first episode back into it, uh, season three, episode one. So Mark's going to start off strong with... That sounds legit, huh? Yeah. That's, that yeah. sounds like we did that on purpose or something. Yeah. <laughs> so this is it. Mark's going to start off with the topic today, and I don't even know what it is, which I heard that if you don't know what the topic is, this is where you get the raw footage, and this is what makes it even better. More entertainment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited to hear what the topic is. I have no idea. Yep. I want to talk about... Deer um, season, hopefully. Yeah. Well, that is that time of year. It's <laughs> November 6th today. It's November 6th. Prime yep. time. Yep. Uh, so uh, my, my, my topic today would be... This is, we're way off our game. We're very off, but this is... Uh, but that's where we start. We start where we start. Yeah, we start from here. Uh, so anyways, the, uh, the uh, topic for today is a self-assessment or a self-appraisal. So how you doing? How Ooh. you really doing? Ooh. Yeah. That, that, that and hurts. that's where I'm kind of sitting down and saying, hmm, scratching my head and looking at that and saying, well, you know what? I'm, the, the good news is, is uh, I'm not doing too bad. I could be worse. But in retrospect, compared to who? Yeah, exactly. That's all we, yeah. we talked about it from, podcast. from where my my focus is. So what, what caused me to go on this is so it's been a little bit since we sat down and recorded. We started earlier this year and we had several in the queue. We were doing it very regularly. And then you got yeah. distracted with your your studies, which yeah. congratulations, by the way, you're Thank you're you. almost done. Thank you. So now so. we get back into this and celebrate. And yeah, exactly. My, my voice so, is probably a little more chippery now. Yeah. Yeah. So for everybody uh, who cares or listens, I guess it'd be our moms, but, uh, <laughs> uh, they, uh, um, Isaiah has passed his series seven and series 66. Yeah. And now he's just finished up his insurance. So he has SIE series seven, series 66. And then, then now he's working that on the insurance. So insurance left. when yeah. that's done, he's a full fledged all out licensed armed and ready. I'm just as cool as you are. Hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so so that, that kind of derailed this this thing. But uh, the, the, the sit down and have a t conversation with each other. But what I found, and I think that you uh, are the same way because last week you started sending me our old podcasts. Yeah. And that is, uh, they were therapeutic for us. I was craving this and then I started listening to it. It actually, it's one of those, the RIS we talked about in a previous podcast is, you know, when you're looking for something, you're going to find it. And that's where you were kind of, kind of mumbling around, not, not sure of your direction, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago and I finished up my test and I'm like, okay, now you kind of now now what's my direction or what's, what's my next step. And so I was, I was looking for stuff and just so happened on my phone, one of our old podcasts popped up and I don't know if that's by default or a message from, you know, the big man upstairs saying, Hey, this is what you need to start doing. And uh, it was lead by example was the the episode that popped up of one that we did. And I listened to it and I said, man, we got some great content. And this is something that I needed to start bringing to the team. And I feel like that was one of my strong points is not, not leading by example necessarily, but just bringing out the, the most obvious and challenging each other. Yep. And that's where you kind of let me off in the accountability of pushing each other because you knew I had my studies and stuff like that. And we kind of lost that, you know, the drive to show up and give each other some grief and, and push and ask questions of how you're doing and all this other stuff. And I think that's where we're to this point in this podcast and today's topic of what, where are we at and what, where are we going from here? Yep. So, um, really back, back to, uh, so I guess really, uh, the question is, and I, maybe we probably or maybe we will edit this so bad. It, there's so much, it won't even be look like anything like what we're talking about, but anyways, we got to just get going. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, where I was thinking about when you were talking about that is like, the, when is the perfect time to go? It's never, there's never a perfect time to start moving towards what you want, you know? Mm hmm you know, and I mean, like right now, these, these chairs don't match this coffee table. And they're like, oh, we should have the other chairs. But the other ch one chair was damaged and it didn't look right. You know, and so and we can easily procrastinate another time, another. Oh, we'll order the new chairs. And when the new chairs come in, we'll get going. You know, it's just like, well, it's time to start now. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's where. So I guess I'm just rambling. But uh, one of the things back to the self-assessment and the, and the appraisal, my life appraisal right now, how am I doing? Uh, well, I had two things that came up in the last week and a half that, that kind of hit me upside the head. And I'm like, you know, dummy, you didn't really do what you should have done with this. And, uh, um, you know, and, and I, I, we've had a lot of things going on. And since, since we are last recording, I mean, I, ha I'm almost an empty nester. Ashley's engaged. She'll probably be gone this spring. Autumn's already married and off. We moved her to California and, and my grandfather again, you know, two, wow. two grandsons now. And so I mean, life is just rapidly changing. So here's the thing, no matter what, 
you are going to be, life is going to push you forward. And it just, because we're all getting older, we're all going to get, you know, and that, that, that is, that is unrefutable. You cannot, you cannot get around that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's up to us as individuals to say, Hey, you know what? This is the direction I want to be heading in. I, I know life is pushing me this way. And I know I can't go back to my high school day. So I, it's, it, I can't go this direction when life is pushing me this way. I'm getting older. But what I do have, you know, I have, you know, 359 degrees that I can change. I know at one degree that I'm pushing older, I can't change that. Okay. Yeah. But I have all these other areas I can look and say, well, I'd like to go here. Or I'd like to try that. Or I'd like to be that. Or I'd like to go over there and, and, and experience that. Uh, that's up to us. And what I found, and I'm, I'm rambling, it sounds like, but we're at, back to the assessment. When I'm sitting down and looking at things is I found that I just last, really the last two years, I've just been letting life just shove me along. Mm. And, and then when I, I had that moment uh, this weekend, I'm like, you know, dummy, you, you need to start Take moving. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to start pushing this direction or moving that direction or, or you know, moving over here. And, and you know that that's where I, that's where the assessment is. Now, well, I think I, I think so that's things. a good point. But like you said, I in a, you know, in, in one point you said like if you want to go to Florida, you got to head in a southerly direction. It yep. doesn't matter, you know, how many potholes are along the way, how many flat tires, or whatever. And I think that's kind of what you're referring to of just different life situations happening to you. But you know, you still want to go in that direction, and no matter what the obstacles might be, you have to get around them and keep moving towards that direction. And that's like your purpose. And as a, as men. I feel like we have to have some type of purpose every day or we you, you get down in the spiral wind where you kind of lead into depression. I think that's Absolutely. a big thing today. And you see that with a lot of retirees, like you, you wake up every single day to go to a job and then you don't have anything to do that next day at retirement, which you think you could do anything in the world. But if you don't have a necessarily a direct, you know, thing that you're supposed to wake up and do every single day, a, a purpose, it's hard to find and grasp onto something. Yep. So, Absolutely. And, and you know what, there's this, um, I, I'm a I, I'm a very deep in my religious beliefs. I'm a Christian. I believe in and I I, I eat, drink, and sleep. And that's my main focus in life. That's my cornerstone, my anchor point in life. Right. Yep. Uh, so, but here's the thing: there is, and I I'm a hundred percent in agreement that God has got a direction for everybody, and you know, and, and he's and he's you know, you got to be sensitive to that direction. All right. I I believe that, and I live that. However, there is a group of Christians that will use that as an excuse for them not to move their behind. Ooh. And that's the thing that I, I, that I fell kind of victim to. Honestly, I, I'll just tell you, honestly, in the yeah. last two years, I was kind of stunned. I got kicked in the face and with some things. And I was like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I just need to stop. Maybe I just need to. And, and I wasted a good year and a half of momentum by just standing around thinking I should stop. What got me was, was there's two things, the building in Dundee that came up for sale again. And then the owner reached out to me and said, Hey, I want to partner with you on this. I was unprepared for that call. I was unprepared financially for the partnership. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I figured things out, got things running, got a, a plan together, he took a full asking price, a full offer price on that building. And that was a bill. That was something that's been on my vision board. It's been in my, I, my planning for years, not just one year, not just yesterday. No years, at least two years, three yeah. years. Cause we, we, went, we got the key to the building, walked around it for three years ago. Wow. And yeah. Christmas. Yeah. The, the I didn't before, three years, but yeah. Before Ida, uh, the, I, the lights, lights. So you've had Ida. a three year window to prepare yeah. or kind I, of get something. I failed yeah. to take advantage of that. The other one is that cottage up North. It's a, it's back on Zillow again. Is it really? And, oh. and I'm looking at that and saying, man, you know what? That's been that's been on my vision board for almost the same amount of time, probably longer, four think, years probably. Yeah, yeah. I can go back and find them and look at them. Yeah, and and I'm not prepared to make an offer on that as well, you know. And so these these opportunities open up, and I look back at that and I say to myself, well, you know, I'm to blame for that. There's not it's not circumstance. It's not that God doesn't want me to have some more. It's not that's not it at all. It's Mark chose to 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 be stunned mm -hmm. and and by some things that didn't work, quite work out like I thought they would. Yeah. And then I just sat down and just said, "Oh, I guess maybe maybe." And and, and here's the thing, and this is what irritates me. Mm. I'm irritated at myself, not more than anybody. And that is we can fall the victim of our own excuses. And, and, and really, you know, we can sit back and say, well, if uh, I, I, one thing that I just, it drives me insane. It drives me insane. And, and in my own life, I do this. And that is, well, if God wants me to have that, he'll give it to me. Yeah. You know, and, and yes, God can do that. 
I, I believe that. I get, he can drop it out of the air and, I mean, put it right on you. But he doesn't do it that way. Yeah. He requires us to sow seed so we can reap a harvest later in life. That's the law of gestation. I mean, you just see it. It's, I mean, you can't plant apples and get pears. I mean, you're going to reap what you plant. Yeah. That's the law of, of the universe. And if you don't believe in God, it's the law of the universe. Go, go out and try planting the corn seed and, and expect to get soybeans from it. It yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. That's not the law of the nature of the universe. So we are responsible. Yeah. You are responsible for your results in your life. That's your responsibility. And can God help us along? Yes, he can. Everything we have is a gift from him. But there is a, it is a, it is a falsehood. It's a lie. And it's an excuse. It's a lousy excuse for people to sit back and say, well, I guess that wasn't meant to be. Well, I think you're kind of doing a discredit for what you're put here on earth to do, you know, from, you know, from a God perspective, like he's going to say, here, I put you here. Here's my intentions with you. And I'm going to throw so many signs at you, but you got to jump and do the rest of the work. Like you're saying, yep. I think, and not to kick you, but I think at those points, like those opportunities, the, you know, the place up North and the building have been thrown in your lab, but you're kind of looking for a little bit more of uh, a reason to do it and pursue it. You know, and saying, I think you have an internal battle of like, should I do this or whatever? And it's, you know, Here's the sign. Here's the building straight up. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Like kind of like battling like what you're going to do and what direction you're going to go and kind of trying to keep your humbleness um, or, you know, what your different routes are, you know, pulling with you at the church and, you know, your yeah. demands are there. So yeah. well, I can see they, that, but it's just like you got to almost stick to your thing and just kind of fit the other obstacles in as you're going to go. And we have a responsibility to be planting seeds yeah no matter where we are in life as a father as a as a, hu a husband as a business person as as whatever you go you have to plant those seeds when you go to the gym plant the seeds yeah you know plant the seed of kindness of, of encouragement of compliments of you know just just uh, that's our job we are to do that and and that's where it irritates me because i stopped planting those seeds you know, that was, that was on me and I'm 100% wrong for doing it. And now I get to suffer from that because guess what? There's not much to harvest because you didn't plant any seeds, dummy, yeah. you know? And so that's where, and, and then what, what, what ticks me off is, is we can use the excuse saying, well, I guess that wasn't meant to be. Yeah. I think yeah. God's up there going like this, hitting himself in the forehead saying, dummy, <laughs> it was, it was meant to be. Can't you understand that? You yeah. just quit doing something. You quit doing what you were supposed to do. Yeah. You know, if you were, if you were kept on the path that you were on, that would have been perfect timing. Everything would have lined up and you would have what you, what your desire was but you chose not to. And then you said, because I'm lazy, I'm going to blame it on God and say, well, oh, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. That ticks me off. And I'm, I'm yelling at myself. I'm not yelling at anybody. I'm yelling at myself because I did that. I just did that. And it irritates me. So what triggered that this weekend? Cause that's when you sent me the workout to get back in the gym. You're like, here we go. When you, you sent me, I think it said, here we go or something, a text. I said, Oh, he's back. And, uh, which is good, but I'm like, oh, man, it makes me step up my game instantly because I was like, oh, man. And I didn't go to the gym this morning, and you sent me your thing, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to hear it today. Yeah. But um, so what? where was the self-evaluation or what triggered it this weekend to say, I need, this is it. This is a stopping point. This is a turning point. I'm going to look at my mirror, you know, swallow what's been bothering me, and yeah. uh, here well, we I go. looked at my vision board. And I said, well, there's two things on my vision board that were the opportunities. I mean, you can't buy something that's not for sale, you know? Well, you, I mean, you can, well, but, yeah, it's, but, it's a, yeah, saying, you know, but that's a but force thing. Yeah, they yeah. came available. Yeah. They came available this year, both of them. Yeah. And I'm not ready for either one. Yeah. And this is something I've been thinking about long, looking forward to saying, boy, that'd be something. And then immediately I'm like, I, I, what got me was I meet my first instinct was, well, I guess that wasn't God's will. I guess that wasn't. And then mm. it's almost like, bam, something came in my head and said, Hey, dummy, when was you working towards that? Yeah. Was you actually putting the effort in? And the answer is no, I wasn't. I was just kind of wandering around, kind of stumbling around, bumping into things. Was I coming to work? Absolutely. Was I, uh, but I'm just saying I didn't have that drive to go forward. Yeah. I wasn't like, Hey, I got to work today and I got to plant seed now because now is the time to plant. Bob Proctor in his, um, um, uh, in his, uh, uh, thinking into results program. He talks about, we don't know when the day of reaping is. We don't, uh, that, I mean, every seed has a different, uh, uh, uh um, gestation. a different gestation period. Yeah. Yep. So some seeds just, uh, the gestation period is three months. Some seeds it's nine months. Some seeds it's five years like bamboo. But anyways, uh, what we, and we don't have any reason. And plus uh, we don't know if the seed is going to take, maybe the ground is not yeah. right. We don't, we can't see all that unless we do an analysis of that. But what we can do, 
every day is plant more seed. Keep planting. That's yeah. our job. We don't have the control over that. That's why even 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 the Bible talks about there. You know, it's Him that brings forth the increase. But our job is to be putting out the seed, and it's a stinking lame excuse for everyone to sit back and say, well, I guess that wasn't meant to be. Yeah. What did you do to make it happen? Yeah. Nothing? Okay, well then, maybe well, it's it not was. meant to be because you didn't plant seeds. Exactly. And that's exactly, you can take the blame, but don't, yeah, like you're yep. saying, don't push the blame on him or somebody yep. else. It's And that's where I'm wrong. And and yeah. I, I, I did that. And I, it ticks me off. It makes me mad. And and that's what irritates me, you know? Yeah. And so, so yes, I was working, but I wasn't working with a vision. I wasn't planning with with a purpose. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of coming in and, oh, spread you know, seed here, spread yeah, seed there. Maybe. You yeah, know, no yeah. thought, no yeah. planning, no, no, um, real strategy. And that's where we, you know, you, 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 you ask for wisdom and God gives you wisdom. But if you go throw, if you throw all your seed on a piece of, on a rock yeah. that has no dirt in it, well, yeah. that was dumb. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get results yeah, from yeah. that. You, God expects a little more from you than that. Right. So now, so, okay. So now you're aware of that and you're planting seeds, but like, what is the major difference from, you know, last week to this week coming in and on a daily you know, the self-evaluation, you, you, you've done that. Now, yeah. moving forward, are we back to the uh, daily hit list of... Uh, yeah, the scorecard. The scorecard. Yeah. Um, simple. It's simple. I, I, it's so simple. It's, it's, it's the simple stuff, but we don't do it because it is so simple. Yeah. Like having a morning routine, getting up at 6 a.m., mm. going and moving your body, working out, waking your mind up, waking your body up, having some mm -hmm. devotion time, mm -hmm. and then journaling. And then turn around and have your your hit list, your five, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, what Andy Frasilla says, yeah. it's your power list. You know? power, power list. The That's power what I said. Yeah, yeah. And, and say, man, these are the five things I have to accomplish today, no matter what happens. I have to get these five things done. Mm -hmm. And... And boy, just when you start doing that, that's what I'm saying. That's when you're starting to plant seed with a with intention. strategy. Yeah, intention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. And you're like, hey, this looks like good ground. I'm going to plant more seed here. That looks like a rock. I don't think that seed's going to grow there. I'm yep. not going to do that. Yep. That's where you need that. That's our job to do it. And then if the seed grows and, and, and you get a massive harvest, great. If it doesn't, that's when you can mm -hmm. look and say, well, I guess that was, uh, you can honestly look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, Hey, I guess that wasn't meant to be because I did my very best. Yep. But when you're you okay can with say that, that then. absolutely. Yeah. When yeah. you can say that, you're 100% okay. Right now, I look in the mirror and I think to myself, yeah, I didn't do my very best. Yeah. I didn't give it my best effort. Yeah. And I've been, I've been sloughing off. I've been wandering around. And I can use all the excuses in the world. And I can, and, and the, as a Christian, the easiest excuse is, well, I guess that wasn't God's, God's plan mm -hmm. for me. And I don't believe, and I, 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 I challenge everyone out there that has that mindset to, to, to check that, you know, cause I, I can, I can assure you that it's not always God's fault. Uh, you know, I, I bet you it never is. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, 99% of the time you're going to look in the mirror and say, I didn't, I didn't. But whenever, whenever you do look in the mirror and you, and you're at peace, yeah. you're at peace, that's where I'm not at peace because I know I didn't do my best. Yeah. I know I didn't try. I know mm. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't being as diligent as I should have been. Yeah. And, and that's what irritates me. This is the hard part of the most uncomfortable though, to look in the mirror and say, yeah, it is me. You know yep. what I mean? We don't ever want to be blamed for anything. We want to think that we're doing our best every single day. But when it, the truth comes down to, if you're not reaching your goals, it's probably something you're doing. Absolutely. And it's and, that and simple. The beauty is God has given us a life, especially in America. We are so blessed. He's given us the opportunity to choose. Yeah. It's like you can choose to make a left turn, a right turn, go straight, go, you know, any, I mean, and you can be right, a right turn and decide to do a left turn later, yeah. you know, and then you end up somewhere else. I mean, that's your choice. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty. Any direction that. you want to go, yeah. that's, it's, it's open. The winds of life yeah. are pushing you somewhere. It's up to you. To, to turn the sail and manipulate that wind to it gets your boat in the right cove that you want to be in. That's yeah. up to you. Yeah. That's that's not God's problem. That's not, you know, your adversary. That That's your problem. Yeah. And you have to make that choice. You, you're the one who gets up every day and says, hey, this is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. This is where I want to be. This is how I want to, I want to, I want my life to be like. Yeah. That's our choice. That's our responsibility. Don't blame it on anybody else. I have, I'm guilty of doing that and it irritates me. Yeah. Well, I you think know? we're all guilty of it. I mean, and we fall into these little slumps. You don't even realize it until somebody's like, hey, dummy, yep. what are you doing? Yep. And that's why I think both of us are at this point now. We're like, okay, we're ready to do something different. And we actually, honestly, we're coming into almost 75 hard season and we probably need it more this year than we ever have. Yeah. And and really, uh, where, I, where I was going to go off of the, with this, this 
topic is, is doing a good self-assessment and really getting raw and real. And that's what we talk about. But well, honesty is part of our core values. Yeah. That's the other thing. When's the last time I really looked at the core values and said, that's where I'm living. Yeah. If I'd have just said I'm living by these core values, I wouldn't be off the trails, like as far as I am, right. you know, yeah. and wishing that I was better. But back, 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 the core value of honesty and getting being honest, but there, let me go back before I say that. There's two pains that you're gonna feel, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Mm. And I've heard that said many, many times, a long time ago, and it's so true. Like right now, I'm feeling the pain of regret. Right. And it's okay to let that pain simmer because that teaches you a lesson. Yeah. And when you feel that and you're like, hey, you know what? I don't like this feeling, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's good. Remember that feeling that you don't like. Yeah. And then, so what happens is, <sighs> well, the pain of discipline has got to feel so much better in the long run. I mean, it stinks yeah. every on a daily basis, but I'm like the reward and the gratitude you get from it. But here's the thing though, the pain of discipline gets old when you don't feel the pain of regret. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, because when you're disciplined and you're and you're just like oh, no, constant, doom, 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 doom. and and yes, the results in life are showing up and they're yeah. better. But after a while, There's, you get tired of that mundane discipline. Oh, I can't do that. I got to go do this. You yeah, know. Yeah. And it gets to be old until you feel the pain of regret, and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. nope, nope, nope. Yep. I'm got to go back to the pain of discipline. Yeah. You know. So sometimes it takes that deviation to say, ooh, that's hot. That burns. Don't touch. Yeah. To remind you, you know what? That's hot. It's and gonna burn. You me. shouldn't do that. I but don't yeah. touch that. Yeah. You know. And and every once in a while we'll get up here and it'd be like, oh, you know. And then you get, you know, you know, you get to where you have to touch it again. Yeah. You know. And I touched it. So now I'm like, okay, that's enough of that. I'm done with that. I don't like that feeling. I don't like that feeling of and really what you've done by by doing nothing and just waiting on the universe or waiting on God just to help you along with you when you're not doing nothing. I, I know this is a controversial, especially for people who have faith. Okay. This is a controversial topic and, and you know, I, maybe I shouldn't even be saying this stuff, but I think but, we should, I like this already, <laughs> but, <laughs> no. but you're, you're, uh, you're relying on God and yes, you have to rely on God. I believe that. However, we can look and, and the Bible clearly teaches we have a responsibility while we're relying on him. We don't just sit here and say, well, you know, I'm waiting for something. Once you've done all you know to do, you rely on him. Yeah. And, and there's, and you know what, as long as you're breathing, there's more to do. As well, I think there's different can, things with, alive. And, and this maybe is getting way too deep and this, I don't even know how much time we have, but when you start relying on other people, and I think that's more in the physical sense, if you're relying on them to, to show up a physical something in your life to say, this is what I'm supposed to do, or you're, you're not moving because you're looking for something physical to show up to give you the direction, I think that's a discredit. I think when you rely on them saying thank you and, and you know sitting down yep. every single night or morning or whatever and get, doing your devotions and stuff like that, I think that's a different type of reliability where you're mentally and uh, spiritually kind of, uh, you know, Connecting on, on that level. Yep. And I think that's where the reliability is saying thank you. And I understand that I'm, I had these opportunities because you, you presented them to me. So okay. I think, you know, I think too many times on a physical level, people rely on them. And then that's where I think, on, you know, this yep. debate kind of thing or whatever, we won't get too far into it. But I think that's where most people are stunned their growth because they're looking for a physical, yep. you know, sign or something direction yep. and they're and they're looking and saying why well, uh i don't know maybe god will tell me if i should have this or i should do that you yeah. know yeah it's like yeah you know how he usually tells you is as you press towards that your 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 feelings about it change or they get better yeah. or maybe they get colder yeah. you're like eh, maybe not and then you move that it, it's usually by you moving yeah. That's usually how you know. Yeah. And and just sitting back and just saying, well, I'm just waiting on God to show me the right thing. Yeah. I think that's a discredit. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think God's up there shaking his head saying, you don't get it. Yeah. You know, and we can go on and on. I could give a, a long Bible class on, on that stuff, but I, I refrain from here, but from that, but maybe I should, but uh, we, we talk about faith. Faith is, is, is a direct, well, James in the, in the book of James, he says, if you have faith and you don't have works, your faith is dead. He goes, I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, works is something that, hey, I believe I could pick that cup up. I could stand here and stare at it and say, I believe it. That doesn't mean do nothing. Your faith is dead. But if I say, I believe I can pick that cup up and I make the effort to pick it up, mm. then I have works to show. And I know that's a silly analogy, but uh, what about in life? You know, so, yeah. I believe I can, I can help more people and, and bring in more clients and, and grow my business and, and be a blessing to all, a lot more people than do well, it, then do something. Yeah. yeah. Don't just sit there and say, I believe, Yeah. you know, you've got to go out and do something, go introduce yourself to more people. 
you know? Mm-hmm. And, and the thing about with me, and this is, this is where I'm like unpacking this and we probably won't ever be, re, re, but we'll just keep going. This is it's good. good. That's good. Uh, but the thing with me is, is I say to myself, oh, well, I don't want to be too entangled with, with, with my business to where uh, I don't have time for God and all this. But you know what? I'm here eight hours a day. Yeah. How many hours during that eight hours were a really productive, focused work? Not very many. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to work 16 hours a day. Yeah. I just got to work eight. What, what happens if I just were productive on all eight hours? Yeah. It would make me, I do twice, I could do twice the amount of revenue by being productive eight hours a day. Truly productive. Yeah. It's like, well, hey, eight hours of work and eight hours to do something else. Yeah, and then exactly. you got eight hours of sleep. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not like I'm sacrificing. Yeah. No, you're here already. You just become dull. You become lethargic and you become lazy. And you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. Ugh, where should I go? What yeah. should I do? It's like, no, you, you need to have a, a much more. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah. I'm not saying throw your family out the window and just go off the deep end. No, just like you. Really, seriously. I, you know, I'm going to kick oh, here you. here we go. Yeah. I, I know that face. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. Okay. The amount of effort it takes to pass those tests. Oh. You could do it in eight hours a day if you really focus. <laughs> right could. before the elk hunt. You, you punted the ball and I knew you was punting the ball mm-hmm. and I said something to you. I'm like, you're not disciplined. You're not focused enough. You're, you're coming in here. And I'd come upstairs and you're watching elk videos and stuff because you're so, you know, yeah. if you were just to focus that because you came back yeah. and you, what did you do? You didn't work much overtime. No, you just started focusing. Yep. And that's the difference. And that's our job. That's our responsibility as, as to honor our creator. Yeah. That's what we need to be doing. Yeah. So, and this is where, so I, and, and, and I didn't do the studies correctly at all. So if I give somebody, this is what you need to do, whatever, you should not listen to anything I have to say. <laughs> Through that whole process, I said I've learned a lot about myself and just different things and how to achieve goals. And yeah, it took me a way longer than it should have. But, uh, you know, through the end of it, I think this is kind of the, the overall plan that, you know, we'll say God had for me is to kind of figure myself out. And I've always said I've never taken tests good or whatever. And that's all been uh, a stigma in my head that I've had since elementary school, I'm like, I don't remember ever passing a test. I really don't. But this is something that I'm just, I kind of made my own roadblock in my head to say, this is just who I am. I'm, I don't study for it. Yeah. And I'm going to fail a test. No, no problem. And I accepted that, which is crazy in itself. Now looking back, cause I'm like, I can pass some tests. I just proved some of the hardest tests or whatever. However, when I went about it, I, I went, I did, I did, I hired tutors. Didn't really work out for me or whatever, but I didn't know my learning style. I didn't know how I was going to learn this stuff. And it took me a long time to figure out myself and how to incorporate this. But over the, where I'm trying to go with this whole thing is I needed to separate my wants and my needs. So there's a lot of things I want to do in life. And then when I got to the, the final thing and I put a deadline, when I put a deadline on the thing, I said, I have to pass the test by this amount of date. And, and my whole thing was to have these uh, tests passed by the end of the year. Uh, it's, it's November now and I'm pretty darn close. I'm like, I've, I'm, I'm going to probably, I'm going to hit the, the goal, but I've used the whole year timeline up where these tests probably should take six months total between all of them. But anyways, when I started separating my wants and my needs, that's when things started really happening to me. And I'm like, I want to go hunting. I want to look up the YouTube videos. I want to do this. And this is all the fun stuff. And like you're saying, when you get off the pain of regret and the pain of discipline, I let the discipline kind of weigh off and whatever. And the discipline is the needs. I need to study this and be legit with it. I need to do two tests a day. I need to do this. But I let my wants and my regrets kind of cre- uh, creep in. And that's where it kind of took me off the path. And that's why I didn't get the results on the first test when I, when I first took them. Fell just short. But my wants is like, okay, I want, I want to go elk hunting. I'm, I'm so focused on this. And I let these things creep in versus letting my needs do it. So the, separating the wants and needs were a big thing for me. And when I can physically see that in my life, when I separate those two, that's when I started getting the absolute results. And that's the discipline that I needed. Yep. So it's always funner to pick on somebody else and pick their, pick apart them. Yeah. So I'm going to pick apart you for oh, a second. Oh, we're going, well, we're over the time. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, All exactly. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I found with you uh, though is, is, uh, your, uh, a self-assessment back to the topic of today is it's a self assessing yourself. Yeah. You, you, um, you were constantly, uh, inaccurately assessing your situation. Hunter. Yeah. And, and then, uh, then finally it started to kick in and you started assessing it as it really is. It's like, okay, 
here's the reality. You know, and I remember telling you many times, you're you're studying this material, but you're not learning it. You're just yeah. you're just going through motions. Yeah. And, I, and you're like, no, no, I think I'm getting it. I'm like, no, you're not getting it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and then finally you said, Hey, I, I remember when you passed the series seven, you're like, ah, I had to get into it. I'm like, yes, that's what you have to do. Yeah. But you can you can trick yourself. And and okay, I'm gonna go back, bash my my things. I haven't changed much since we last recorded. And that's <laughs> your Facebook, your Instagram, your social media, your YouTube, and your video. All these things they send a false sense of security of accomplishment saying and and really what happens is you really don't get a chance to peel the onion down deep enough to say how am i really doing yeah and and am i really saturating and getting this down inside me to where i can take a test and pass it yeah what's nice about those tests is well they don't lie the numbers are the numbers and that's (laughs) if you don't understand it you won't pass it yeah 100 percent. and that's That's i think that was a changer for me when you're like hey i need to see your test scores and when you held me accountable and i had to show i'm like oh man i don't want to show them this that gets embarrassing after time i'm like man i gotta i had an excuse still every time which is bad like i'm still working through that is like well this is why i got this or whatever but it doesn't matter you're like well that's not good enough you got to do better yeah and then that's where i'm like it started ramping me up and that's where i started passing these tests because like you said you can come and show up for eight hours a day and i was reading that i was reading that material for eight hours a day but i wasn't really comprehending i wasn't really engaged in it because i'm like okay elk hunting i'm like oh this is great but i'm still okay uh you know securities act of 1933 i'm like oh yeah but and i'm so i'm reading the material but i'm not 100 percent engaged in it so like you're saying with your power list if i if i would have came in and said i need to read this i can't think of anything just keep pulling myself back take the test score if i'm a 63 that's not good enough i can't go home until i get a 73 whatever the score number is but like the score numbers do not lie yeah and that was 100% my accountability at every single day when I would tell you my test scores. I'm like, yeah, not there. Yep. And that's yep. where I started engaging more and I could turn off the, 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 the distractions of different things coming in and say, man, I, I don't like this feeling when I have to tell Mark what my test scores are every day and I'm not where I need to be. And the, and the problem is, in all fairness, is our society today is it's very difficult to get a true appraisal on how we really are. It's Yeah. Because uh, because we can we can cheat the system so quickly. Well, I mean, um, we have a guy helping us with our Facebook now, mm-hmm. and and what's funny is he even said he, he's good at it, yeah. and he's like, well, it's Facebook; it doesn't have to be real. I was like, what? He's like, oh yeah, no, he goes, you could be having a bad day, but post you're having a good day. It's okay, you yeah, know, everybody's yeah. doing it. And I'm like, I that is true, and that, that is very true because you go on Facebook and everybody's having a good day. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. everybody's always positive, and everybody's always happy, and then you go into the real world and you look around or you meet that person, and you're like, man, that's not at all like how they are, you know? Yeah. And it, and 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 that's where I'm saying that true self assessment. It's like, how are you doing? One of the things on my vision board is I wrote on there: Are you happy with who you are right now? That was that was one of the phrases I just put on my vision board, and it and it's like four or five different places on, and I read it a lot all, all the time. Are you happy with who you are right now? Seriously, truly, really, internally, are you really happy? Mm. Are you really happy with that? Are you happy with the result you're getting? Are you really happy with with the effort you're putting in? Mm. Are you happy with the focus that you have? Are you happy with the thoughts that you're dealing with? Mm. I mean, really, uh, do it a self assessment. Uh, not be so busy and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Look, I'm I'm posted. I'm happy." See? Yeah, that's uh-huh. you know, that's fooling yourself too, as yeah. long as with everybody else. You're not really doing a true self appraisal. Yeah, of really, how am I doing? Well, I think that I'm, and for me, it's a, it's a physical measurement or some type of, you know, something I can see an actual, like for the, the test scores, it was the number shootout. Okay. I'm, I'm not happy with the test scores. I need to work harder at that. That's boom. That's the measurement. When I go to the gym, when I leave there and I'm like, man, I'm exhausted. The next day kind of tells you, I'm like, man, I am super sore. That's a great assessment. I know I had a great workout if I'm sore the next day or okay. even that day. I mean, if you're that day, yeah, it's a really, really good workout. But, you know, the next day or whatever, you know, there's for me, I have to have some type of measurement. And we talk about whatever gets measured gets improved. Yep. And I think for me, that's that's the game changer. I have to have some type of measurement of how I'm standing on each whatever event I'm doing. Yep. Yep. I agree. All right. Do a self-assessment. Figure out where you are. We're coming into the end of the year. Now's a good time to do it. Well, this is the time to get ahead of it and and have goals for next year, business plans, vision boards, whatever it is. You know, I mean, this is is the time. Start thinking about it. So, and be real. Just be real. Yep. All right. All right. We'll see you next time.